Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a Titan in the affordable category with the Casio G-Shock Cassie Oak. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end. Also throughout this video though, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can learn more, purchase the watch and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. In 1983, Casio launched the G-Shock after two years of development by legendary engineer Kiko Ibe. The concept was to develop a timepiece that could withstand a fall over 30 feet, be submerged in water up to 100 meters, and have long-lasting battery life. Ultimately, those objectives were met with the DW5000C, which was launched as the initial model. Today, the G-Shock is more than a durable hardcore quartz tool watch. It's one of the most popular timepieces in the world and has become a fashion icon, especially in the social media age. And today, we're going to look at one of the more popular G-Shock styles. This one was unveiled a couple years ago with the stylish and fun GA2110, sometimes referred to as the Cassie Oak. And for this video, we have three different color variations. So let's take a closer look. Taking a look at this G-Shock on the wrist, we have a modern sports watch case dimension set of 45.4 millimeters across, a case height of 11.8 millimeters, and a top to bottom length of 48.5 millimeters. While those numbers seem to be on the large side of the case size spectrum, the fit is actually rather compact and wearability is further enhanced by the lightweight construction. The entire case and strap is manufactured from a resin composite over a steel body, which is durable and obviously very lightweight and sealed for 200 meters of water resistance. The G-Shock in a lot of ways is the ultimate modern grab it and go timepiece. And before we dive into the operations, let's first talk about the many ways it can be worn. Stylistically, it has a very casual and sporty look and can be anything from a weekend watch, a watch for the job site, a travel companion, and a field watch, among many other things. The only environment you really could say it's out of place is for more formal situations. However, outside of that, the G-Shock has laid its claim as one of the most versatile all-arounders you can have for the price that almost anyone can afford, therefore making it one of the most popular timepieces in the world. But the appealing aspect of this particular G-Shock is the porthole style bezel, which is reminiscent of both AP and Hublot's bezel design, and I don't think that by accident either. This design feature is particularly prevalent on some of the two-tone colorways, such as the blue-gray dial variant that we have here. On the single color options, the bezel design is not nearly as pronounced, blending in better with the case and strap. So if you want something that's a bit more subdued in that respect, then a single color variant is probably going to be best. The resin straps are thin and really pliable, providing a very comfortable fit around the wrist, even if the tactile feel of the resin compound isn't particularly soft to the touch. It also features some ergonomic design elements that help keep it comfortable in various weather conditions, with wave vents at the top of the strap and underside grooves that supposedly allow air through to keep you from sweating, which in practice actually does help. The strap measures at 25 millimeters at its widest point and tapers down to 19 millimeters at a hardened resin pin buckle, which matches the case color. Now, despite the strap being able to be removed, I don't think it makes much sense to remove it. I think the resin pairing just works well with the totality and cohesiveness of the design. Just another point on wearability. Now, this is not going to necessarily be a small watch, but even for myself, given the intended purpose, this is something that I could easily wear. It wears probably closer to that of a 41 to 42 millimeter watch if I had to put a traditional circular case equivalent to what is being provided here. And despite the thickness not appearing that large from the measurement, that's probably going to be the area where you feel it. It does sit high on the wrist, so just keep that in mind. Perhaps the most obvious design is actually what it's missing and not necessarily what the watch has. And that's a traditional stem and crown. Instead of a crown, the features are operated by a series of four steel buttons that are found at the two, four, eight, and 10 o'clock case positions. At the 10, you have the adjust button. At the eight, the mode button. At the four, the start button. And at two, you have the light button, which shines on the digital display in the bottom right half of the dial. Each button's function is clearly denoted on the bezel just above the location of the corresponding button. 
button. So knowing which button is what is easy to identify, or at least easier than some other Casio models out there on the market. Now, before we get into what each button does, let's go over the dial and the dial features themselves. First, starting with the mineral crystal that protects it. The crystal sits at a slightly lowered plane than the top of the bezel, which protects the crystal from getting chipped or scratched, a convenient feature given that mineral crystals don't carry the same hardness properties that sapphire does. There is a bit of glare cast across the crystal, but it doesn't really impede the ability to view the features on the dial. This model starts out with a substantial geometric chapter ring that houses these very bold and angular hour indices, which make their way around the entire dial. As we move inward, we have a day indicator positioned along the left side of the dial, aligned between the 8 and 10 o'clock markers featuring a large flat arrow hand that points to the day of the week. In the center, we have a set of bold pencil style hands containing a large amount of luminous material that are tasks for time telling duties for the analog portion of the dial, while the screen in the bottom right half of the dial is where you'll find all of your digital readouts, including telling the time in tandem with the analog hands. Now, there are a few slew of features on this watch, including a world timer with 31 time zone locations, an alarm, stopwatch, countdown timer, as well as a home time indicator, and that's where we will start in what Casio calls the configuration mode. The first configuration mode is setting the home time, which is described as home city, and the default setting is Tokyo. So in order to change that, you want to make sure the digital display is in the default time setting and not in another mode. From there, you will be able to press and hold the adjust button until the screen flashes and then transitions to the city indicator. Once here, you can then circle through 31 available city locations to set your time by pressing the start button. After the city is selected, hit the adjust button to set your home time, and the watch and the hands automatically reposition themselves to the proper time and date. Now, once you have the city selected, you could be done, but there are other configuration options you might want to consider. For example, you have the option of choosing whether or not your country recognizes daylight savings time. The default setting is for daylight savings to be off. So if you are in daylight savings time starting in spring and running through autumn, you would follow the same steps as you would for selecting the time zone by starting out holding the adjust button until it flashes into the setting mode where once again, the city will pop up. From there, instead of hitting the start button, which would cycle through the cities, hit the mode button to change the display from city selector to daylight savings toggle. Along the top right corner of the screen, there are two small indicators labeled DST and HND. When you are in daylight savings mode, a small black screen indicator pops up and aligns with the label so you know you're in that setting mode to toggle daylight savings on or off. Other configurable modes can be toggled through the button sequence using the mode button, including a 12 or 24 hour display, which follows the DLS mode. From there, you move into actual digital display time mode, where you can reset the seconds first, hours next, and finally the minutes. Fortunately, if the watch is properly in sync between the analog and digital readouts, you likely won't have to change the hours and minutes between the time zones. But if you're a stickler for extreme accuracy, resetting the seconds is a nice feature to have. And then the configuration mode allows you to mute or unmute the sound of the button tones and adjust the light display from one and a half seconds to three seconds. To exit the setting mode at any time, simply press the adjust button. Once you have your watch configured to your preferences, you can use some of the features with the mode button, press it once to display the world time mode, which allows you to check across different time zones all over the world. The next mode is the stopwatch function labeled STW, which features the straightforward operation. Press the start button to both start and stop this function and hit press to reset it back to zero. This also has a split time or lap feature if needed. The next feature is a countdown timer, which has a default setting of 10 minutes and can easily be adjusted. In order to do this, you will just use the familiar button sequence. Upon entering this mode, hold down the adjust button until you enter the flashing set mode. And then the display will give you the ability to adjust the hours, minutes, and seconds for your countdown timer. When you have your timer set, simply press the adjust button to leave the configuration mode and press the start button to begin the countdown timer. At the end of the countdown timer, an alarm will sound, which is silenced by pressing the mode button. The next mode feature is an alarm in which there are six available alarms at your disposal and setting them follows that same sequence of buttons with a couple of important steps to follow. Most importantly, toggling the alarm on and off. When you enter the alarm mode, the start button cycles through the six available alarms while the adjust button turns them on or off by quickly pressing the button. When the alarm is set, the word on is displayed beneath and when the alarm is off, 
which of course is the default setting, two dashes are displayed below the 24 hour readout. Before we move on, there are two more interesting features that this G-Shock deploys, which address two very real concerns. One, moving the hands out of the way of the digital display if you need to see it and adjust the misaligned hands. For the first issue, if the hands are interfering with the visibility of the digital display, press the light and mode buttons simultaneously and the hands will either move forward or backwards depending on their alignment over the display. While this is a convenient feature, it's not perfect. You can't keep the hands out of the way while cycling the modes. In fact, when you hit the mode button when the hands are displaced, they will simply reset to their correct orientation. I find it's easiest to enter the mode first, even if the dial is obstructed, then move the hands out of the way and then operate the function as needed. To adjust the misaligned hands, you press and hold the adjust button for a few seconds while the digital display is in time function, just like you would with the set home city. Only this time you hold a few extra seconds until you see the phrase, H set flash. This screen will enter the home city mode and then transition to the H set mode. Be patient here. It does take a moment to get to this point. Once, once you are here, you can then either set the sub register hand, which is the day of the week pointer and the hour and minute hands. To advance each hand in tiny increments, press the light or start button to go backwards or forwards. Once you're satisfied with their positions, pressing the adjust button once more will exit that mode and you should have a properly set G-Shock. Powering all these functions is a Quartz 5611 module that uses two batteries, which will lead to three years of battery life. But keep in mind that that is going to be heavily dependent on the use of that LED light. With the Quartz movement, you're going to get a high level of accuracy, which Casio claims to be within 15 seconds a month. And as I mentioned earlier, if you really are particular about the accuracy on a daily or even a monthly basis, you can simply reset the second hand at your convenience. The movement is quite basic, and being that it's relatively simple electronic Quartz caliber, there aren't any details to share really beyond this. But with that being said, you're clearly getting one of the most reliable movements produced by a powerhouse in the industry in this price range in Casio. All right, so now to unpack looking at this Casio G-Shock Cassie Oak. When you look at the price range around $100 and also just look at the G-Shock and it's just claim to fame in the industry, it's perhaps unmatched. It's really a reason why the G-Shock is essentially the best selling watch on the entire market. But what makes this one unique compared to the vast offering that the G-Shock has is going to be the analog digital display, as well as the case profile that has some Royal Oak undertones in terms of at least the case shape. The watch is pretty wearable, all things considered, and has classic G-Shock with the conventional functions. It's lightweight on the wrist, has a variety of features, also is incredibly fashionable. It just looks great. Price and value is there. There are some areas of legibility concerns when you're dealing with certain color variants, like the red dial, for example, I find is a bit harder to read compared to like this gray dial. This might be the most legible of all the options. But apart from that, this is just good value at $100. It has a myriad of features. It's classic G-Shock design. It could take a beating and is a nice everyday companion and suitable for pretty much every situation. Just don't wear this one with a suit, guys. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. Do appreciate that in the process as well. And also, if you're in the market for this watch, check it out. It's available on teddybaldasar.com. Teddybaldasar.com is a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. We also offer price match. So if you see one of our products for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form and we'll be in touch with you. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content here, as well as on our main channel, trying to help foster a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.